So last time we talked about using Gaussian curves uh, to describe the probability density function for our data. In other words, we found a way to take something that's, uh, that's random uh, and to use our experimental knowledge um, to turn that into a mathematical expression. Now we'll see how to use that mathematical expression uh, to give us um, a better sense of what our uncertainties are. So uh, we parameterize that Gaussian curve using the parameters sigma and, uh, and x bar. And those are really important values uh, in terms of uh, quantifying random uncertainty. Um, x bar is just the mean of our data points. Okay, so that's the central um, uh, point of our Gaussian curve. Okay, here it's x prime, but that's essentially the same as x bar here. Um, once we know what x bar is, in other words, we're just going to take all our data points and take an average of them, uh, we can use that to calculate our sigma, and that's called our standard deviation. And here's our equation for standard deviation, and it looks... Um, like it's not a lot of fun, um, just that sigma. People <laughs> we don't like those big sigmas. Um, all this is, if we look at this math, this x bar is our mean value. Xi is each of our data points. So we're gonna take each of our data points and find the difference between that data point and the mean. That's called a deviation. Uh, that's where standard deviation comes from. Um, so this is where we, the distance that the da each data point deviates from the mean, we're going to square it basically just to get rid of uh, sign because we want to know the distance from x bar. We don't care which side of x bar it's on. And then we're going to sum up all of those deviations. Okay, but we don't really want the sum of the deviations. We want the average deviation. So we divide that by n, the number of data points that we just summed up. And then we take the square root of it to get rid of that square and get back to the units that we uh, that we're actually measuring in. And so what this essentially means is it's the average distance of uh, the the, each of the data points from our central mean. So you could sort of guess, like if this histogram represents our data points, here's our mean value. What's our standard deviation here? Well, you know, these points are pretty close to it and there are a lot of them. These points are farther away, but there aren't that many. So maybe our standard deviation is 0.15, like the average point. In other words, how far is the average point away from 1.0? Yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, something like that. That would be our standard deviation here. Um, and most of the time, you're not going to use this equation. You're going to use a spreadsheet to calculate that. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But it's good to know what that math is doing. So once we know those two uh, parameters, x bar and sigma, we actually have a good sense of what the nature of our data is. We know what the spread of it is, how far away most points are away from the mean, and we know what that mean is. It also allows us to guess about where the next data points are going to fall. We, can, we know just from a mathematical analysis of a Gaussian curve, of that y equals e to the neg negative x um, squared, um, that 68% of our data points are going to fall within one sigma of x mean. Okay, so if I think of this as a histogram here, right? Our bin goes from negative sigma to sigma, and 68% of our data points fall within there. Uh, within two sigma, 95% of our data points fall within there. So we can write in uncertainty parlance something like this, where we say we are pretty sure that our the true value is um, within two sigma, two uh, standard deviations of our mean, and we're 95% sure uh, that that next data point is going to fall there. Okay. And so we can, uh, we can, this mathematical expression can be translated like this. 
And make sure you understand that because that's a key point of um, about standard deviations and about the way we use them for uncertainty. So sigma gives us a way to start talking about what's the chance that a data point lives within some range around x bar. We give that range in terms of standard deviations a name and we call that a z-score. Um, and that z-score, if you look at this equation, this is just a data point. This is our mean. So we're finding the deviation and we're dividing it by sigma. So essentially this is going to give us how many sigmas is our data point away from the mean. Um, so if z is equal to 2, x1 is 2 standard deviations away from the mean. Um, and because we associate two sigma with 95%, or really 95.5%, uh, we can see that there's only a 4.5% chance that a new data point will fall farther away um, from our mean than, uh, than two sigma, okay? Or, or farther away than, say, that, that data point. Now, we can use z-score calculators, um, and here's one that I find uh, to be pretty useful on, uh, on the internet. Um, and this is what that calculator looks like. So we could sort of, this is what we're entering into the calculator. I have a data point that's 13 units, whatever. My mean for that data set is 10. And my standard deviation for that data set is 1.5. So I enter these values and I click calculate. This tells me I have a z-score of 2, right? And that's this over here is the same calculation over here, just with different variable names. The deviation is 3. My data point is 3 away from my mean. Divided by my standard deviation tells me I'm 2 standard deviations away. Uh, and then that calculator gives us some other useful information, right? This, the red tells us, okay, there's a 97% chance that it's less than, that the next point would be uh, less than um, 13. Um, there's a 47.7% chance that it lies between the mean and, um, and 13. And you can see, where does that 95 come from? Well, we just, we're just doubling this, right? This is giving us a, what's called a one-tailed um, version of that. But our two-tailed would say, okay, between two sigma over here and negative two sigma, we'd have two times that, which would be 95.5%. Okay, so you can use those calculators to help you uh, uh, figure out your z-score or to figure out your confidence, lo uh, confidence level which is a vocabulary that I haven't used yet, so we're gonna use that here. Uh, but uh, when we use that for uncertainty, we take that percentage that's associated with a z-score and we call it a confidence level. Um, and that's the confidence that the next data point will fall within that z-score range, okay? So if we write this here, where z is a function of p, right? If uh, if my percentage is, my confidence level is 95%, my z is going to be 2. You can use a z-score calculator to figure that out. Um, then I can write this, right? That my next data point is going to fall within 2 sigma, and I'm 95% sure that that's the case. Now, the fact that when you look at confidence levels, they're almost always going to be 68% and 95%. That's because of this math, right? Those are the convenient numbers for one sigma and two sigma, okay? As engineers, we almost uh, always use 95%. I rarely see 68%, um, and so you, you'll get used to using two sigma. We like being certain <laughs> engineers. <laughs> we, wanna, we wanna make sure we know really what our limits are because we don't want that bridge to fall down. All right, so this is an important point. When we talk about standard deviation, we're saying if I took one more data point, where would that data point fall? Most of the time though, we're concerned about 
how good our mean value is, not where the next data point is going to fall. Uh, and so we want to use what's called standard deviation of the mean. We want to, this is going to tell us uh, how sure we are that our mean value is close to the true value. And so if we consider if I took one, you know, here's my data for my that air duct ID uh, experiment over here. Um, if I took one set of data, I might find that my mean value was 1.0. Right? But if I took another small set of data, maybe I get an average that's closer to 0.9. I take another mean, I get 1.06. Um, so each time I take another set of data, I'm going to get a mean that's slightly different. But those are going to be bunched closer together right? uh, than our individual data points. Like here's my mean values. Um, they're all going to be closer to 1 basically because I'm going to water down any outliers, right? And like, say I get this data point, what's the chance that I get, you know, if I have an N of five, I take five data points, not all five of my data points are going to be over here. Some of them are going to be over here and there, and that's going to get me as a mean closer to my true value. Uh, and so there's going to be less scatter in our mean values than there is in our individual data points. That means that that standard deviation of the mean is going to be smaller uh, than our standard deviation. And that's what this equation says here. If that square root of n, we're going to divide this. This is always going to be above 1. Uh, and so this number is going to be smaller than that one. You can do a little thought experiment and say, well, what if I took a, an infinite number of data points? Well, in that case, my standard deviation of mean is going to be zero because I will have all my knowledge. I'll, I'll understand what all of my data points are. Um, and so that's going to give me uh, that true value. If I, my n is 1, uh, then my standard deviation of the mean is the same as my standard deviation. Okay. When we write, if I take... Um, a set of data points and I want to report, like if I measure one thing 10 times and I want to say what the value of that one thing is, uh, we're going to use standard deviation of the mean and we're going to use it like this, okay? Where we find the standard deviation of the mean, if I want a 95% confidence level, I'm going to use Z95, which is two, um, and that's going to be my uncertainty, two times the standard deviation of the mean. And again, this is a sort of important translation here. Make sure you understand this. If I took another data set with n data points, I'm going to be 95% certain that my new mean for my new set of data is going to fall within this range. And that's a way of expressing the, the random uncertainty in that uh, set of data.